St. Paul wrote this letter to the Romans informing that, that he would be visiting the church in Rome very soon. This letter is a little different in the case that he was aware of all the other churches to whom he wrote letters. This congregation church was the only church to which he wrote without seeing them, interacting them, without having any knowledge of <coughs> the daily <coughs> activities inside the church. But he was very aware of the context in Rome, where many business people all over the world were living. They were thronging towards Rome. There is a saying you may be knowing that all roads lead to Rome. That was the business center 2,000 years ago. The official language was Latin, but Greek was also recognized as one of the official languages. Paul wrote in Greek to the Romans. The church in Rome was mostly filled with non-Jewish Christians. There were few Jewish Christians. There always used to be tension between Jewish Christians and non-Jewish, otherwise it is called Gentiles. The Jewish Christians used to insist on various customs that were followed by Jewish or Judaism in Jerusalem. There was little difference with that of the Jewish custom in Judea and those who were in diaspora in African countries and other European countries. Now, he uses this term, the gospel, the gospel. In Greek, it is called Evangelio, Evangelio. Royal families, they used to proclaim to make the people know about certain celebrations that are held in their royal court, namely birth anniversaries, wedding anniversaries, coronation anniversaries, and so on. For that, they use this term called Evangelio, good news. For that purpose only, this Greek word was put into use by the Romans. Evangelio means some kind of good news that is meant to be related with the royal court, royal family kings and queens, and therefore, when Paul wrote this letter, at the very beginning of his writing, he uses the term evangelio. Not only the celebrations in the royal court needs to be understood as Evangelio, but good news of God, the Creator, good news of Christ's ministry, need to be understood as Evangelio, Evangelio. Thirteen times this term, gospel, 
is used in the book letter to the romans the word god is used 153 times or oh, therefore some ex- experts in theology they say the book of god the letter of god they used to say letter to the romans is called as gospel of god book of god letter of god and the word christ is used 65 times in romans these are all very very important in terms of theological knowledge and theological understandings and this book romans is one of the uh, difficult books in the new testament to understand it needs lot of time reading and reflection as i told earlier when we study in theological seminaries we have to uh, write examinations conducted by the college as well as by the senate of serampore this subject called pauline thought comes under senate of serampore university paper we have to score 60% to get pass that's the minimum mark if you don't get 60 60 we will be failing in it many used to score more than 70 or 80 even 85 o plus but they find it difficult to get at least the minimum mark of 60 when we write certain questions to answer if i write related with romans i need to also write he, what he was having in mind when he wrote to the Ro- corinthians and which was the earlier one galatian was the letter was the first one and the second is thessalonians we need to relate all these letters when we write examinations and this book letter to the romans gives ample ideas about the gospel when you read and understand this letter means we are understanding the entire bible from genesis to the revelation so we, therefore it needs a careful study and each word is very very important evangelio the gospel and this was already made known to the people of israel during the time of isaiah isaiah 61 verse 1 isaiah 61 verse 1 the spirit of the sovereign lord is on me because the lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor evangelio to the poor good news to the poor apostles must be understood as old testament prophets and new testament teachers prophets of the old testament and teachers of the new testaments even it is recorded in isaiah 49 41 27 52 7 and so on so christian good news is the gospel of god the gospel of god gospel of god is his son gospel of christ gospel of god was already there when prophets were ministering to the people of israel many many years ago before christ could start his ministry or paul could write his letters luke chapter 24 
after the resurrection jesus speaks about good news that were made available during the old testament period when he appeared before the 12 disciples or 11 disciples in jerusalem luke chapter 24 verse 44 2444 you said to them this is what i told you while i was still with you everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of moses the prophets and the psalms he brings in three different groups of the study in the old testament prophets the third part of the old testament which is called nabim in hebrew nabim the psalms is called ketubim writings all writings and moses law is called torah first five books are called the torah and after that there are other writings which is called writings first samuel second samuel <clears throat> and kings and chronicles psalms proverbs and so on and finally they have compiled in such a way the third part of the old testament is called nabim that is books prophetical books these things were known to all the people in israel and he says that everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of moses first book first five books the prophets and the psalms and good news was preached to the people of israel to warn them in order to repent to avoid exile to babylon captivity in babylon the whole of isaiah uh, that was given to make them aware of the seriousness of their sinful activities and they were warned not to commit sins and also they were asked to repent from their sins again in chapter 1 romans 1 verse 9 says that god whom i serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son he narrows down the teachings he says that the gospel of his son god whom i serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son he is my witness how constantly i remember you in my prayers at all times and he goes on explaining his vision and ministry to the people of uh, roman church when martin luther wanted to relate uh, christ with that of uh, the enter ministry of the new testament or enter teachings of the new testament he says that here the door is thrown open wide for understanding of holy scriptures that is that everything must be understood in relation to christ whether you are genesis or isaiah or jeremiah our psalms you need to keep in mind that everything must be understood in relation to christ that's how we have been reading and reflecting and studying and similarly calvin one of the reformist uh, pastor calvin a swedish man says that the whole gospel is is contained in christ <coughs> he says the whole gospel is contained in christ when you read about the birth of christ 
his ministry is suffering death resurrection it all contain the gospel in christ so the lenten season has been designed in such a way to focus our thought on christ that will be culminated on good friday on good friday it is about his son let me read again roman 13 regarding his son who as to his human nature was a descendant of david the next I mean, till the next 8 days including today we will be reflecting only from chapter 1 of the letter of the romans within this chapter paul writes many things to be understood he suddenly he brings the name of david at the time of annunciation luke 1:20 when gabriel appeared before mother mary <clears throat> he says that luke chapter 132 verse 32 he will be great and will be called the son of the most high the lord god will give him the throne of his father david he makes it a point to mention the name of king david to establish his physical presence historical jesus who who as to his human nature was the descendant of david david was a king still people of israel admire a lot after king david there were many kings ruled northern part of palestine israel and southern part of palestine judea many kings were there but people remember only king david he was a fallen man but after that he was transformed he was an ordinary shepherd made to be king of the people of israel he was honest in many sense to please god and to administer properly representing god the father the creator and therefore he wants to highlight the tradition of the people of israel where they honor respect the administration the piousness of king let me conclude with verse <clears throat> first corinthian chapter 9 first corinthian chapter 9 verse 23 i do all this for the sake of the gospel that i may share in its blessings gospel is very very important to me i do all this for the sake of the gospel he was a writer editor publisher gospel worker traveler and so on just because of the gospel gospel is very important and we need to be aware of these things when you want to preach on the ministry of our lord jesus christ and the commitment of saint paul let us pray gracious lord help us to be the true servants in learning the biblical truth in order to protect ourselves from all dangers in order to protect people from many kinds of dangers let our spiritual exercises be a joyful one and fruitful one Jesus name we pray amen